There's a big fish. Get him, buddy. I'm ready. In an earlier episode, we took you to the Iron River area of Wisconsin where professional guide Jeff Evans shared a great pattern for warm water crappies that hang out on the weed lines. You know what I call that? Perfect. I love them. For years, whenever we've wanted to fish northwestern Wisconsin, Jeff's been my go-to guy. Jeff Evans guides throughout the Superior Ashland Hayward Triangle, hundreds and hundreds of pristine glacial lakes just loaded with a variety of different game fish species. I consider this area one of the most overlooked fishing destinations in all of the upper Midwest. Anyway, while there last summer, Evans and Berg also spent time targeting summertime walleyes and smallmouth bass. And that's exactly where I'd like to pick things up today. First, post cold front, midday high sun walleye fishing, which to Jeff meant only one thing, looking along the deep weed edge with a technique go, that man. even here finicky go, walleyes go. find hard to go. resist. Here we go, here we go. Somebody's putting on a clinic. This is actually, if things go the way we want it to, it's a good mixed bag situation. We've got deep weeds out in 15 to 20 feet of water. Last time I was out here, we caught everything from largemouth to smallmouth to walleyes to pike, so. Could be interesting. It's almost like you know how I like to fish. Yep. You catch everything. Exactly. Nate and I are fishing the uh, middle of July right now. Um, it's a transition period. We're post spawn, way past spawn on a smallmouth bass. The walleyes, of course, have been done a long time ago. Uh, we're really kind of turning into that summer pattern where fish are moving out towards deeper structures, main lake points, rock bars, weed beds, and things like that. Okay, buddy. You ready? You know, I spend a lot of June fishing slip bobbers with leeches and minnows, and I always tend to move to, to crawler harnesses as we get into the midsummer months. I know Nate actually will fish crawler harnesses much earlier than I do. You know, Jeff, it's amazing how simple of a technique this is, but how deadly it is. Oh, absolutely. You know, you got a little bullet weight, a swivel, and your harness. Two hooks and a night crawler, and you just drag it at one mile an hour or 1.1, somewhere around there. As we get into this time of year, you'll start to see it become more effective for us, especially off of that deep weed edge. Clearwater lakes, you're gonna see that weed edge in 15 to 20 feet of water usually, and Nate and I were just slowly dragging those things and kind of weaving in and out of that outside edge. What you got, Jeff? Feels like a good fish, Nate. Do I need to reel in here? Yeah, get I think I might need a little help. We moved out on you know, that outside edge of that weed bed. That looks like, like a pretty nice fish. Yeah, I, it's hard to it's tell. Now it's looking a little bit like a pike. Yeah. I'm gonna go to back reel here, just in case. I see the fish. It looks like a walleye. Think so? Staying on like one. Oh, 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 oh. He hasn't made those real long runs like a pike. I know, that's what I'm saying. Jeez, it's that, a big walleye. It's a big is, walleye. It is, it is. It's a big it walleye, is. Nate. It is. Oh, yeah. Big walleye. Okay, here he is. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> What a walleye. That's a beauty. It's gonna be a 25er, huh? Yeah, look at that fish. Huh? Look at how healthy it is. Yeah. It's a gorgeous fish. Love them, absolutely love them. Hard to go wrong with a crawler harness, my friend. Nate and I know best when it comes to walleye fishing on a tough day, you gotta go to crawler harnesses. You gotta cover water, you gotta get right down in their face. And I, that's did, I did result. not expect to catch one that size no, today. No, I did not either. I mean, we're talking some of the worst cold front conditions you can have. Yeah. And to catch one like that, should we measure him? That's the reward. Most people hang it up, walleye yeah, oh fishing yeah. about the end of June. Yeah. And you can catch them all summer long, but you got to learn how to do this. You mm -hmm. absolutely have to learn how to do this. Okay, continuing now in northwestern Wisconsin with guy Jeff Evans and pro staffer Nate Berg, Weed edge walleyes are really seeming to get the hots for crawler harnesses 
as they spin, thump, and pass on by. We're coming through some fish here. There's one, two, three. We should get bit here. They've moved up a little bit shallower. I gotta speed us up a little bit. I'm going a little slow. There he is. Oh. There he is, Nate. Another good fish, another good fish. Over the years, I've developed a tendency with my crawler harnesses to use the bigger blades. I really like number five blades. Yeah, that was a nice strike, too. Really nice. Am I gonna have to go with bronze here? Well, I think they're getting a little more aggressive. The only real reason I can tell you is it catches more fish for me, and I think it's probably the thump and the flash, which is the, you know, the big attractant of that crawler harnesses. It feels decent, I'll tell you that. We're gonna probably need the net. Yeah, I'll get the net when he gets close. And I also like the metallic colors. Uh, bronze, um, gold, even silver at times are my favorite choices. What do we got? Another Walter? That is another nice walleye. Nice walleye. Another one, Nate. Watch your, watch your tip there. Got it. There you go. All right. Nice walleye. Oh yeah, look at that. I believe there will be a bronze going on mine real soon. Beautiful. Well, this is over years of kind of cycling through every different color and having my different favorites, but it always kind of comes back to those big metallic colors and number five blades. I think it's time for me to switch to bronze there, Jeff. I'm gonna put her back. Awesome, nice fish. We were using St. Croix rods uh, while we were dragging those crawler harnesses, which were absolutely awesome. They're so sensitive. Another very important aspect of this whole deal is no stretch line. So you can really snap that off the weed, you know? Oh, absolutely. And I like seven foot rods for that presentation for a couple of different reasons. You know, number one is it gives you a lot of room to make a good hook set. I'm out a little deeper. I'm gonna try it a little deeper this oh, time. Oh, here we go, Nate. Here we go, here we go. <laughs> go figure. Here we go, here we go, here we go. <laughs> Somebody's putting on a clinic. Yes. What is that one now? That's good fish. Really? That's good fish. Really? Well, I'm gonna stop it and reel in. Before we were setting that hook, we were kind of following that fish back, almost feeding them the crawler harness, and you don't really have to give them a big set. You just kind of snap your wrist and you got them. I mean, you, you nail them right there. Staying deep too, huh? Yeah. Especially with no stretch line, that seven foot rod just kind of eliminates big sweeping hook sets that we used to have to use all the time. Putting the old Avid X to the test. It's just the typical stay deep, walleye <laughs> thump. There's old clay face shake. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, look at that, she come. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Mr. Berg, we got into some nice fish today. Um, when I get all grown up, I'd like to catch one like that. Oh, look what at that. What a dandy. Look at that. What a walleye. I love them. We're in a really cool time period right now in the Hayward area for walleye fishing. 23? 23. 23. Oh, yes. There is a small part of me that's very jealous because you're kicking my butt. I'm having a great day. <laughs> Let's let her go. I love it. My turn. Our, our local biologists are doing some aggressive stocking efforts on a lot of our lakes. Jeff, 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 Jeff. I'm letting them go here. Ah. <laughs> Love it when the drag goes as soon as you set the hook. Really bolstering those populations by putting in extended growth fish. Post nasty cold front. Oof. First afternoon, and we're catching, ooh, nice walleye. See her down there? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. There you go, bud. Back up a little bit. There you go. Oh, is she a dandy? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Nice fish. Nice you fish. You can kick my butt all you want as long as I catch a few fish like this. I think they see the importance of getting those populations up to, to numbers that are gonna be able to sustain the pressures that are happening on a year-round basis now. That's another dandy. And I'm super positive about it and really excited to see what the future holds. Beautiful, bud. I love it. You gotta come fishing with Jeff Evans. The Jeff Evans Fishing Guides. <laughs> He's got it down. Oh, man. Let her go. Next morning, the boys prepare for smallmouth, only not by fishing over rocks like most fishermen mostly do. They plan on taking smallmouth out of thick cabbage beds, where they also like to spend a lot of time in the summer ambushing prey fish as they pass by. 
You know, a lot of people, when they think about smallmouth bass, they think it's a rock fish, meaning that they're always going to be around rocky structures, rocky points, rocky islands, things like that. And you know, there's a lot of times where that's a true scenario. Here we go, Nate. Here we go, ah. bud. Right by the boat. Nice smallmouth. But in lakes that have smallmouth bass, there are times of the year that they relate to weed lines. Middle of summer is exactly one of those times. I'm trying to keep his head down. He wanted to come up and shake that bait. The reason being is a lot of your new minnows, uh, you know, fry that have hatched from the spring of the year are relating to those weed beds. Nice oh, yeah. fish. Spitting out crayfish. Yeah, he was too. They're eating. He was. Uh, Nate and I fished some thick cabbage uh, beds today in about probably five to 10 feet of water and those smallmouth were hanging all over them. If I had to pick one method to catch fish, and obviously I'm not the only one who's on to it, it's been going on for about 15 years. Longer than that, Jeff. But that wacky worm has really stood the test of time. There's a lot of fads in fishing that come and go, but that thing right there continues to oh, catch it. Nate and I were fishing with kind of a tried and, uh, tried and true technique that I've been using with my guiding customers for years. Well, there goes my line. There's one, Jeff. Nice. Nice, Mr. Berg. We were working down shorelines, again, targeting those those thick cabbage beds. He likes his weeds down there. Oh, Another nice, a nice fish. one. Oh, a nice fish. <laughs> there he jumps Gee, right over the net. <laughs> As we were moving down the shoreline, we were casting wacky worms. It's such a wonderful way to catch bass anywhere in the country, largemouth or smallmouth. That is a monster northern Wisconsin smallie. And as we were going along, we were also dragging a, a sucker minnow underneath a slip bobber. There goes the bobber, Nate. Um, and a lot of times, you know, especially on a tough day, um, that can mean the difference between, you know, a few fish or a lot of fish. Yeah, he's there, he's there, he's there. <laughs> <laughs> and for us today, it was just kind of fun because it gave us a lot of bonus and kicker fish that added to the stuff we were getting on the wacky worms. Wacky wow. worms and bobbers, Nate. Wacky worms and suckers and bobbers. This is a just a toad. Every one we've caught has been nice, but this is of the bigger end of nice, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Look at right in the lip, too. <laughs> right where you're supposed to hook them. What a great looking <laughs> fish. When I'm looking at weed, weed beds for smallmouth bass and kind of trying to pick spots that I think are going to hold fish, I like them close and adjacent to rocky structure. Who would not like to catch? This is 19 inch fish. Who would not like to catch a smallmouth like that? This is dandy, they're pretty in here too. Awesome. If I have a nice patch of weeds that's close to rocky structure, I feel pretty confident that there's gonna be smallmouth nearby at certain times of the year. So, oh, there we go, Nate. Really? Yes, 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 yes. Sweet. And I also like a nice sharp wall adjacent to deep water. Usually that outside edge of that weed bed's gonna hold fish. Tell you what, if this is how the dog days of summer are gonna start out, <laughs> bring it on. Nice fish, Jeff. The hooks we were using today were circle octopus hooks. They were actually the size of one knot, and that's our average fish today. Three pounds, three and a half. Beautiful. And I like to use them because, for two reasons. Number one, when you set the hook, you've got them. There we go, there we go. Whether it's in the side of the mouth, in the lip, uh, wherever wherever it might be, if you get that hook set right, you've got them. It's not coming off. There you go. I'll tell you, it's been about a 50-50 wacky sucker minnow situation yeah, today. It is. Second thing is, is, if that fish does happen to swallow the bait, you're you're able to reach in there with the forceps, go through the gills, and rotate that hook out so you're not harming the fish at all. To me, which is extremely important because all these fish go back. It's one of the reasons why we have such great smallmouth fishing in northern Wisconsin. That fish is as good as new. The setups we were using today, um, you know, our St. Croix rods had, you know, were spooled with, with braided line, but I always tie in a three to four foot liter um, of fluorocarbon. And for me, it's, you know, a couple of things. It's again, fluorocarbon is no stretch, but it also gives you a very natural presentation. It's invisible underwater. And I always like to make things as natural as possible. It's a very easy, easy system. So just pop, 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 and let it sink pop, 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 and let it sink. And you have two strike indicators. You have your feel, you might feel them, and then you watch your line, your line will take off like a rocket. Oh, there he is, <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> 
trying to teach everybody how it's done. Here I go netting your fish again. The fisheries that we have are, are unbelievable, and we were treated to an absolutely spectacular yeah, um, you day of action. Another, another good fish. Oh. And it was about as good as it gets for midsummer, uh, pretty much nonstop with an average size around three and a half to four pounds, with a couple of fish that were probably tipping that five pound mark. It was really, really an, an outstanding day and a great way to end our trip. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it, man. Thick weeds and weed edges. Many fishermen think they're too much of a hassle to fish, but in actuality, it's not all that difficult to do if you learn how to do it properly. Today, you've seen two patterns for walleye and bass relating specifically to weedy types of cover. The reasons fish go, congregate there are many. Yes, Forge yes, fish yes, and yes. game fish alike yes. find security in the weeds where it's so much easier to hide than an open bottom or suspended in open water. Weeds attract food for uh, fish of all types, in fact, for the exact same reason. In the case of walleyes with their light sensitive eyes, thick cover helps them to escape direct sunlight while seeking to feed in shallower water. Yeah! <laughs> now before we go, I can't possibly urge you enough to get a hold of Jeff Evans' guides to plan a trip to fish northern Wisconsin for yourself. He's a great guy and a true expert on virtually every type of game fish in the Superior Ashland Hayward Triangle I described earlier on. You can learn more about all the opportunities he offers by checking out his website or simply giving him a call. You know, come to think of it, I guess it's no secret that in every body of water that has them, summer weed beds are teeming with aquatic life and this can often be the key to getting in on some of the best fishing you will ever find. Anyway, if you didn't already know, now you do, and it's well worth your time to go looking for bass and walleye there in those plush green weed beds, especially when your more typical spots and techniques aren't seeming to pan out. I'm Babe Winkleman. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, everybody, hey, good fishing.